Okay, uh, hello guys. Uh, yes, I have been away for a while, but this channel has been transferred to someone else. And uh, yeah, basically someone else is running the show now. Um, the older content creator wanted to keep anonymity and now I am here. Okay, and the style has also changed a little bit. I hope you guys like it. Okay, so now we are going to start to discussing topics that um, the older content creator always wanted to discuss, but he cannot discuss it because of the nature, so he just gave up the channel. And yeah, now the topics are going to get fun and things are going to change up a little. So I'm going to try some new stuff and yeah, let's hope it works. Okay, let's get into the video. Singapore is fake. Everything you know about it is a lie, okay? Um, I'll explain what I mean by that in a second, but here are some uh, statistics that people always give about Singapore. Oh, look, it has a high GDP per capita. People make a, a lot of money. They have a low homeless rate. I'll explain what that means in a second. Um, they have good public infrastructure. This as well is, this is also another common point. People make a lot, um, but the thing is, I'll explain that later as well. And a clean government. The, the government is very clean and no corruption. This is also um, wrong. I'll explain this. And now this point I'm actually going to just skip. Um, this is a very political point and this uh, offends people a lot. So I'm, I'm just going to skip this. Um, long story short, um, the, the drug policy was basically, I don't like this because black people, but I like this because white people. Uh, the person who started the war on drugs admitted this himself. And then next would be um, the founder being a prophet or a god. Um, as we know, um, many people worship this guy. This it would be the example of the greatest history of revision I have ever seen. And yes, we got a cute little eraser. It erases the history and then they rewrite it to make it nice. And this has basically been happening in Singapore for a very long time. Now, sources. Let us begin with some sources. So what sources do I have? My sources that I made it the fuck up. Or am I just talking out of my ass? Like the PAP. Well, I am actually not. So the first would be a blog by this guy called Kenneth J. Arathnam. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Now, he is actually J.B. Jayaratnam's son. Now, this guy was the founder, this person here, is actually the founder of the opposition party who opposed uh, the PAP back in the day. And Kenneth Jayaratnam was also around when Singapore was literally being built. Uh, this, His dad is basically older than Singapore as well. These guys or almost, I think. These guys have basically seen Singapore um, through its industrialization. Kenneth over here also has a degree of economics from Cambridge, okay, Cambridge. I don't know how to spell it. Uh, so he is very smart, IQ plus. And of course we have Senator Armstrong. Uh, my source is that I made it up. That is also obviously there. There is gonna be a little bit of my opinion in here. Now there is another, now there are two main sources which um, really opened my eyes about this country. That would be Michael Haas. I think this is a German name and I don't know how to say this, but this one, this, this one is really good. I got this one from JS Tor and I got this one from Taylor and Francis. Now, is peer reviewing perfect? No. So you have one dude who, one dude who writes an article and this article gets looked at. You can see this is the scientific parallax error I, okay? It gets looked at by a bunch of other scientists. Um, IQ plus, and these scientists basically say, all right, how, how much bullshit is written in this? Um, I, I don't actually know. All right, you see this? This is bullshit, guys, okay? How, how much bullshit is inside this? And now these two pieces, they are, this one is a little bit opinionated. Oh, does that say good? I'm sorry, that's supposed to say G-O-O-K. Wow, I fucked that up. Right, this is the correct spot. Now this one is a little bit opinionated, all right? But this, this one is pretty factual as well, but all right, these two, they don't say anything crazy, if you know what I mean. They generally keep it pretty low, they present statistics, and they make a case, they make points. And these points are not that out of the picture. Now there's another book called Authoritarian Rule of Law that was <clears throat> written by Jyoti Raja, but I'm not, I might talk about that in a future video. That is also something definitely worth the read if you are interested in this country. Now, these two articles came from Journal of Contemporary Asia, and uh, Kenneth J. Rutnam also runs a blog. <clears throat> now, in the blog, um, Kenneth J. Rutnam makes a lot of points, okay, so there is a point, and he backs it up with statistics and sources sources he backs it up 
And sure, you can say all of these people are just opinionated and I don't like them, and that is fine. And you can say that, you know, peer review is uh, bullshit, uh, the vaccine is totally fake, but I mean, Singaporeans believe in the vaccine a lot. I'm not saying it's fake, by the way. And you can basically discredit these two guys. But the point I'm trying to make here is that I have some sources, okay? I am not talking fully out of my ass here. And hopefully these sources count for something. Now, okay, let's go back to that table I had earlier. Okay, so high GDP per capita. This has to be an amazing thing, right? Oh my god, this has to be really good. But guess what? GDP per hour worked is also very low. Now, and another thing, high GDP per capita doesn't really mean much. If me and Johnny Sins are in a room, the average PP size is going to be very high. But that does not mean my PP is large, not large right? Average or per capita doesn't mean much. Uh, by the way, the porn thing was a just, 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 just a joke. Porn is really bad, guys. Stay away from that shit. Read your brain on porn by Gary Wilson. You get the point. Now, the Gini coefficient is basically money. I mean, this is usually called wealth or whatever. And then you have cumulative, I mean, hang on, I think cumulative percent. You have cumulative population. So basically, as you go across the x-axis, this is 100% of the population, and this is zero, and this is like 50 all right, and then you have basically money. So this is the line of equality, which means 50% of people have 50% of the money, zero have 0%, 25 have 25%. And usually countries curves will look something like this. You'll have more concentrated in the top percentile and basically less for these guys. Now the Gini coefficient is this area divided by the entire triangle area. So the higher the Gini coefficient, the lower the equality, right? Uh, now, am I saying equality is good? I mean, I don't know, I'm, I'm just making a point here, okay? I'm not trying to say like, oh, equality, but generally equality is kind of good. If you have large amounts of inequality, uh, that's usually not a good idea. India, okay, the country that everybody calls a corrupt shithole, has a lower Gini coefficient than Singapore. So. He you think about what that means, right? Now, let's talk about homelessness, okay? Singapore has a really low homeless rate, which has to be a good thing, right? But let's actually look into that. So I'll play this video by a Singaporean guy basically telling us about the freehold titles. The Land Acquisition Act in Singapore triumphs over your freehold property title. The number this means if the government wants your freehold piece of land for the purpose of nation building, it will come to you and pay you at a valuation price and you would have to surrender your piece of land to the government. Three, if the government wants your piece of land, they will have it. And I want you to think about it. If the situation is like this in Singapore, where things are so transparent and uncorrupted, what do you think about investing in overseas properties like villas in Bali or even building hotels in Vietnam? Okay, you guys watched it. Now you can understand why I have a problem with this. People in Singapore are not... People in Singapore basically are homeless because the PAP, which is the governing party in Singapore, basically owns all of the land. That's right. Basically all of Singapore, which looks something like this, this is like a shitty drawing. It looks, it looks like this, okay? You see, all, all of this is owned by the PAP, right? Houses or HDBs here are leased on 99 years, okay? This is not ownership. Okay, I don't know why this is called ownership. More than 85% of Singaporeans live in these HDBs. 85% of the population in Singapore. And many people say it's like, wait, but Sid, how, how does the, how did the government, like, how does the government own so many houses? Well, they use this thing called the Land Acquisition Act to basically get land. They, they acquire land through this act at a lower prices. They basically force people to sell to them. And they use it to develop this, um, quote-unquote, public infrastructure, which I'll talk about slightly later. Okay, now we will talk about something that is arguably my favorite topic. Okay, now we will talk about clean government. All right, so I'll explain to you a scenario in Singapore. Now, before we begin, corruption agencies are owned by the government. So the thing they are supposed to invest, investigate. So these guys are supposed to investigate these guys. They're supposed to keep an eye on these guys, okay? But these guys own these guys. So what? I'll, I'll talk about what this is later as well. Corruption agencies, land management agencies, and virtually LTA, every single agency in Singapore is owned by the PAP. 
right? They own everything. So it's like, I'm going to be prosecuting myself. You know what I'm saying, right? Pure irony can be seen when Sean Muga, minister of law, said, who will watch the watchers? Uh, this is like, I think this is a Latin quote. Uh, the this same minister of law also uses public servants to find expensive houses for himself to rent and then uses the SLA to give him cheaper rents on those houses. Right out ridges, all I'm going to say here. Now, all right, Singapore is hailed for having low tax, right? Uh, low tax, tax is theft, Yes, daddy. Okay. I mean, who, who? that's like the concern of me. Right. But in Singapore, there's this thing called the CPF. Now, the CPF is called the Central Provident Fund. And it's basically an extra 17% of wages, which you kind of give to the government, but you cannot use it. So people, you have the peoples and, and they work. They, they work as engineer. You know, we got the, the wrench. Let's see if I can draw a wrench here. They, they work as doctor. Okay. And then they make green. Okay. And then this green goes to tax. Now, tax, sure, that's kind of something we all have accepted. Uh, every country has tax, and Singapore does actually have low tax. And that money just goes to the government. But it also ha there's also a CPF. These two things together make up around 30%. So you think about how much that really is. This is not like, this is, I wouldn't consider this low tax. This is, there's a lot of hidden tax over here. So you cannot necessarily say it is low tax. This CPF money can only be used in buying a house or retiring. The government actually keeps this money for a very long time. This is the PAP. These guys keep the money for a very long time and they give it to the GIC and Thomas Sec Holdings. Now, these two companies are basically investment companies. So the government takes all this money from you, CPF, and they pay you like 1% interest. So wait, this all the way goes back here. This is like 1% interest, really low interest rates, okay? And they give it to these two companies. Now, the chairman of the GIC is actually the prime minister himself, who is a part of the PAP itself. So this guy basically owns this, all right? And there's this other person who owns Tomasek Holdings. That is a woman you can see by the hairs. Now, the person who owns Tomasek Holdings also receives this CPF money. And together, these people can just use it to invest however, however they want. Uh, imagine I gave you a trading account and you basically had access to everybody's tax money in your country. And no one was there to hold you accountable. You could just kind of use it however you want. These people also make crazy amount of returns, which they kind of just pocket these both of these are private corporations the investment outcomes of this are kept secret so meaning no eyes okay no eyes all eyes on me no eyes on me okay tupac all right no one is allowed to know the details of these investments oh and also this person here this woman here this these two people okay the the president the prime minister sorry the chairman of the gic and the fa the chairman of the ceo of thomas Eck holdings they are married think about that so you literally have a business with its own private business interests, basically taking all of your tax money and CPF. Now, if this is not called a conflict of interest, I don't know what the fuck is, okay? Now, is a conflict of interest bad? I mean, shit, dog, I, I, I don't fucking know, but I'm going to tell you something. If there's a conflict of, conflict of interest found on a personal level, you bet your ass the government and agencies and everybody will scrutinize it. If you so much as just apply in a company where your father is like the CEO or whatever, it gets criticized to shit. So, is Singapore a clean government? I mean, shit, dog, we should ask Bishop, Bishop Bullwink. Hey, Bishop Bullwink, tell us about what's going on here. Is it clean? Right. So again, low tax and effective government. Uh, your tax ain't low, buddy. This is not low. It's lower than New York. Yes. No. New York has a very large state tax. It's lower than Europe. Yes, but it is not low. Do not give me that bullshit. Right. There is no health care, and there's no health care here as well. Now, if this is considered clean, if all this I just showed you, okay, if this is clean, then shit, dog. The browsing history for porn addict is clean. Okay. Now, the history might be clean, but the brain is fucked. All right. Stay away from that shit, people. Now, again, Singaporeans, again, they don't know what their government is doing. Accountability, none of that, okay? It is illegal for them to know. Okay, now I will get to the point of good public infrastructure. Hang on, let me get my, my slides. Okay, now, <clears throat> if I compare my PP size to a micro penis, it is going to look okay, quote unquote, but it's still small. Singapore public transport, let's say it exists. 
it is better than uh, New York. It is better than um, Texas. Okay, it is better than um, certain Indian cities. And you know what? Good for that. I'm glad they figured it out. But it is still horrible. Now you see these <coughs> red spots like over here, over here, over here. These red spots are high density housing. Again, keep in mind that the PAP basically owns this entire thing. They own everything here, okay? Now, I don't want to sound weird, but in Singapore, you got all these quote-unquote normal slash average income people wedged into zones like this. And then you got people like uh, the politicians, minister of law, foreigners, okay, who come in and they live in like these extremely low density uh, luxury building style houses now many of you can simply say oh well sid uh, they can afford it and most singaporeans cannot to which i would simply ask it's not about that what i'm hinting at is i'm hinting at ineffective land management due to zero accountability opaque government this land is not allocated properly you might think oh look there's a lot of green patches here these green patches are not this is not wildlife reserve these green patches are not actually sustainable. They don't actually contribute to anything much. They are just for show. They don't lower global warming. Oh, the Singapore Zoo is also located here, right? This is not fucking Amazon River with like hippos and shit. This is just fakeness, <clears throat> if you will. I think something fishy is going on here. I'll talk about it more later, but this is not effective land management at all. This to me looks like poor people being wedged into certain zones while rich people get the rest of the city to basically fuck around. That is what I think is really going on here. Of course, it sounds a little bit conspiracy theory and I will discuss this later, right? If you look at Singapore, you'll see extremely dense housing, HDBs, which is Housing Development Board. This is the, the government basically confiscated land back in the 1970s, um, 80s, 1900s, late 1900s, and then they built HDBs on top of them. And then you'll see areas of luxury houses. Singapore also simply has too many roads, weird ass densities, and an average commute time of 50 minutes. All right, so now let's talk about that, right? Let's talk about the public transport. Everybody always says it's so great. You see these dark, thick, dark lines over here. The length of this line is about 10 kilometers long. And this line over here is about 30 kilometers long. That's right. Singapore is a very small place. Now, I remember earlier how I spoke about inefficient land management. Singapore average commute timings are 50 minutes. Now, there's this thing called the Thompson Downs paradox, which states that the car is only going to be as fast as the train. Now, I'm going to make up something called the Singapore Down Syndrome paradox, which says that everything is just slow as fuck. In a country this small, these two black lines represent virtually the entire city. And you see these two thinner black lines here. This is a very short distance. This, you should be able to cover this entire dark line extremely quickly. In fact, you should be able to cycle it. If you really think about it, 30 kilometers is not actually that much. Now, obviously you don't need to do the whole 30 kilometers the whole time. This area is supposed to be very easy to reach from a distance point of view. Yet it seems to take forever. Why? Again, the 50 minutes average commute time should call things into suspicion. This land is not handled efficiently and these guys are not held accountable to anything. And that is usually, that is what I have for now. Now, of course, I'll make more videos about this. And um, again, all of this is a joke, guys. Um, please, please don't sue me. I'm just pointing out statistics here. I have not done any investigation. I have not done any journalism. Uh, I mean, I'm not even in Singapore, but I'm just saying I don't want to make no enemies. I'm just pointing out the bullshit I see. Thank you for watching. I'll make more videos later and have a nice day.